Welcome everyone to Senior Morning. Hi, hello. I'm Heather Placco, the Program Manager, and today we're excited to welcome artist, museum friend, and Presidential Advisory Council member, Preston Jackson, to speak on the piece behind me, Bronzeville to Harlem, an American Story. A special thank you to our members and our Visionary Society members who make virtual programming like this possible. Without further ado, welcome to Preston Jackson. Hello. My name is Preston Jackson. Um, I'm an artist, uh, have been, as, as long as, I mean, I can remember. I started making art at the age of, uh, my mom says seven and before that. But um, I do recall a very early age, my desire and uh, was driven, you know, to put things that I saw around me in my environment on paper and make them as um, interesting and entertaining mostly. <laughs> and that continued even to the ripe old age of, ha uh -huh, I won't tell you. <laughs> anyway, well, I'll tell you someday. This is a really great opportunity for me uh, to be able to, or to have been chosen, to put on this exhibit. As a child, I was always interested in building a city and controlling it. Maybe that says a lot about my personality. <laughs> um, but I, I wanted to, I, I think it would be equal to what, um, young girls would do uh, children, as children with their dolls. Same thing. We, you know, as male children, we had things like that, maybe more in the form of automobiles or something like that, but it didn't matter. Uh, it's that longing to tell or put on a play or to create some type of operetta or, or uh, uh, event with little things. This is called Bronzeville to Harlem, an American uh, reality, yes. Um, now, I could have screwed up that uh, title, but it is a story. It's an American story. And that's the new title for this. And in fact, that concept came up, uh, that title that came up by uh, the, um, uh, president, a, di a director of the Riverfront Museum, uh, John Morris. But anyway, um, yes, this is a story about a segment, uh, a part. There are so many parts of America, so many. And that's the beauty of it, is that we're all from different places, you know, for different reasons and different desires and some uh, successful, some rather gleeful, and, and some rather disappointing. And, you know, well, in life, that is life itself. You know, you take both the good and the bad, and you turn them all into something good. But anyway, this is uh, about that particular thing. Um, African Americans make up a pretty large part of America, as uh, do Hispanics and, and uh, Russians and uh, Asians, uh, everyone. Uh, so although the word minority, I don't like using, you know, because I like to focus on the concept of uh, majority. But um, here is the story of visual story of a particular group and that's African-Americans. But um, as you know, our lives were blended or mixed with other lives uh, that, that happened within our, our community. I like to think of um, 
this as a bronze and steel city. Uh, lifeless or life uh, depends on your imagination. Uh, my particular imagination has always led me into the direction of storytelling, so much so that I can hear and uh, predict or it's like a, a jazz player. He pre hears or senses everything before it actually becomes materialized. So in my case, I hear and see the activities of this city. Now, that's not just in a visual sense, but there are other elements that kick in or that are, are, are used. The elements of color, line, shape, um, and positioning, whether three-dimensional or two-dimensional. But uh, that excites me. And this I try to transfer or communicate to my audience, always involved with what people think. Or, you know, jazz isn't jazz unless you hear it. And the most important thing about it is that you share it. So here we are uh, sharing some of these things. Mostly cast, the figures, automobiles, buildings. These are castings. That's where we get all of this heavy weight. I mean, if I would pick up a small figure, you know, my body would know it because you can feel the weightiness of it. And um, uh, I don't think anything is, well, most of them, all of them are cast. Uh, there are a few uh, scenes of gatherings or groups of people that are cut out of steel and, and sort of uh, stuck together and placing emphasis on uh, silhouette, the whole idea of silhouetture as a, a, an image. Um, I like to think of them as shadows. So they serve two purposes. One, the being of a figure and the shadow of a figure. And you place these silhouettes on top of each other, away from each other, and you can see them move. At least I can see them move. Hopefully you can. So um, steel, bronze, and, and that's about it, okay? That make up the media for, for this entire piece. Uh, painting. Yes, painting is definitely involved in here. In fact, like dance uh, uh, performances, you know, it incorporates all the movements. Or cinema, cinema would be a great um, example. It incorporates all of the arts, and that's something that I I, I uh, try to do in my work. Um, behind me, I'm sure you can see it. Uh, these are presented in a way a stage maker or um, opera or something, you know, centrally located uh, within a rectangle such as a stage. Uh, here we have a rectangle, a box-like setting that these things are in. So I'm able to guide my audience to certain areas of the display, whereas they would pick up the same sensations, you know. Some are forcefully presented to you, right in front of you, blocking your movement and your view, and you have to look at it. And some areas, through the use of creative space, will welcome and guide you into it. So that is another important element. Um, I think of it as an installation. You go into the art and uh, hopefully, you know, you are, are captured or uh, engulfed or drawn into it and begin to pick up what the artist had has seen and uh, through the use of color and modeling. Uh, one of my uh, students, um, Josh Sheldon, he suggested to me, he says, it's got to be a real city. The colors have to be dirty. <laughs> he says it's too clean. And he says something about uh, one particular color uh, or painting, painted area that draws everything together should be incorporated in this. And I agree with him. 
in fact, I agree with a lot of things that come uh, out of, uh, you know, away from my own brain and and into uh, to me by suggestions or uh, discussions. Uh, Marshall Swinson uh, is another artist, young artist, who is, uh, well, responsible for a lot of these castings. He's a foundryman and he has his own business, but he is also responsible for suggestions. Um, I would um, also like to say that friends, crew members have also donated. I mean, a lot of these little figures are started by, you know, a number of people, you know, Billy Howell and uh, uh, Joy Kessler. Well, Joy Kessler is my main assistant, but they would block these in and, and capture the gesture and I would come along and uh, get them detail and further developing them. So there's a lot of hands on these, you know, uh, maybe what, uh, maybe 10 or 15 people that assist in painting and also forming and hauling. And um, I have another new assistant, assistant Arian, he's involved in this and, um, but it doesn't really come together without the desire and interest of uh, people from institutions, certain institutions like uh, the Riverfront um, a Museum. You know, it has traveled. I'll get on. I'll get back to you on that. But it takes people like that, people who believe as you do or similar, and uh, mainly believing in the necessity of uh, creating something that brings people together especially especially today this is the second showing meaning that um, it was shown maybe what 10 uh, not <laughs> 15 20 years ago at the uh, contemporary art center uh, across the street and um, we we showed it there well in fact that was the debut of it uh, of it and that's when it all uh, happened and here we are maybe 18 years later, and um, uh, John Morris says, he, he talked to me about it, and oh, that's a great idea, a great idea. I mean, he is still, and has always been super excited about this piece. And uh, that's what I need, you know, that same excitement flows into it. And it actually uh, has given it new life, you know, new excitement. That's why we actually doubled uh, the uh, the piece instead of one that existed for a long time and traveled you know places down south and west out west and to Iowa and uh, places like that Tennessee Tougaloo College and uh, Memphis and uh, or, or Nashville places like that even over to Macomb Illinois um, it has grown it has actually doubled in scale okay so I just want to make note of that. And now here I am, you know, talking um, on uh, Heather, Heather's uh, program that she has, uh, pre uh, well, responsible for me bringing it to you uh, electronically. But anyway, yes, it is part one, part two. Part two has a slightly different name and more explain, uh, it explains, you know, uh, the piece. So, um, I think I should maybe point or direct, step down within my perimeter here and, and uh, show you something. This, you know, uh, John Morris was out here the other day and I happened to look at um, some things that was left over that were going to be thrown out. And I told Zach, you know, Zach who is uh, the uh, uh, curator of, of shows here. I told Zach, I said, wouldn't this be a great table? You know, this, uh, I work better with found objects and that's what that, that was. It was a found object that I sliced with my grinder, cut in two and rearranged it. And um, with uh, scrap steel that I have floating around uh, from my buddy, Dan, Dan Rittenhaler. And I put it all together and this is an example of the entire piece made up of found objects and pieces of steel 
uh, mostly scrap welded together. Um, I, I will admit it's quite heavy because we're talking all steel. But if you're going to put tables and buildings and other steel and bronze objects on it, uh, they have to be strong enough to hold it. But anyway, uh, here, here is an example. I think I've drawn from many different times and, and styles, uh, and you'll, you'll, you'll see that. Maybe you'll recognize it. Uh, like, uh, what, uh, deco, the decorative period, uh, the uh, period of, um, I don't know, even abstraction, because some of the figures are quite uh, strange, you know, uh, in, in their um, positions and the way they were modeled. But um, the floral period, uh, you know, that happened before deco uh, is, uh, is incorporated into the piece. Other disciplines, such as mm, uh, the art of the relief. Uh, there are a lot of relief pieces, high reliefs, low reliefs, uh, low enough to be drawings into clay and cast. So there's a lot of that going on. Um, I, you know, I, I, that brings me in mind some of the design elements. Uh, one we call gradation. Gradation and um, what? Well, re repeated, that's, that's a, a, a very basic, uh, 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 re when you repeat something, okay? And uh, you can see how things radiate from a given focus area. And that's an old eye trick. You know, you see it in, in design. Now, if you look closely and you're aware of it, a lot of design concepts involved. And that's another thing I, I have to admit to, the fact that um, architecture and my knowledge, limited knowledge, I, I, I must admit, of architecture is involved. Uh, nothing is measured, you know. I pick up a piece of steel, something that usually fits in many uh, case, in cases, if it doesn't fit, I'll build something around it to either hide it or to, um, I wouldn't say hide, but uh, I'll build something around it in order to allow it to fit. Here's an example. This church, I hope you can see, this is a building that existed. This was the old War Chapel building. It was a church, you know. Uh, it, pretty close to this, especially that style, you know, that uh, began to at that time, that particular style. The intricacies and detail isn't really a thing of importance to me for, uh, you know, the fact that I consider the whole object, the whole object itself, um, as, as a detailed example. So within each building or vignette, area of there is something going on. This piece that exists by itself as a, a work of art. Uh, uh, because, you know, it's, it's uh, mobile. I don't know what, what, uh, what you call it. Uh, you can move it around. You know, it's kinetic. And of course, uh, my body would be the machine. But anyway, things happen when you move things around. And that's what's important about sculpture. It's three-dimensional. Uh, even uh, the time of day, if it were exposed to artificial light, uh, would um, uh, affect how we see things, you know, and that's what's going on. This entire piece, you're looking at it still in uh, uh, the assembly uh, stage, you know, when we're putting, putting it together. But when it's lit, you know, um, this is where, where Zach comes in, the kid. <laughs> When he helped, and by my guidance, and Joey Kessler, you know, when they are involved in this, it's going to be phenomenal. I mean, you're, you're going to be drawn to it. I mentioned that before. But you'll be drawn, you'll be pulled into the piece. And what happens when you are entertained or your mind is diverted to something pleasant? What happens? Then all of the unpleasants fall away, okay? And for a moment, you have a respite area, season, R, 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 
moment when you're a child again, playing with your little dolls and toys, you know, you, you don't hear or see uh, the, you know, the political and uproar and even things that are, we can't control. You don't see it or feel it anymore. For a moment, you're drawn into this fantasy and uh, that fantasy is a part of the artist, of course, because I'm sharing it with you. But not to mention the fact that you have your own way of interpreting uh, things. Um, pieces that you see under, you know, on the uh, ground, um, they will remain in some areas. I decided to uh, take advantage of pieces that can be displayed on the ground. Uh, I want to do that now. I had canceled that. In fact, that was the reason I built all these tables. But now I'm saying to myself, it fills up these spatial areas under the buildings. So I will share a little bit of that uh, not to present the presentation by placing these on the ground. Here is an example of silhouettes cut out of steel and um, welded to curved steel buildings. It's just a, you know, but they appear all over the place. You know, it gives the city a sense of busyness and also that uh, kinetic feeling of movement that that's going on. And that's how, uh, that's the purpose of, of, of these silhouettes. Certain angles, of course, they become more visible than other angles. Um, this is perforated steel uh, that uh, I got from um, Margaret at Lucas Steel. She is uh, a fan. In fact, uh, her, uh, she and her family, you know, uh, the Hanleys, are responsible for, they donated most of this steel, <laughs> as did Dan Rittenhaler. But, uh, you know, a little cost. Uh, Mostly, <laughs> no cost at all. And that's another beautiful element that people were uh, involved in giving, you know, uh, to this. Uh, Jim Baldwin, a friend of mine, um, has done a lot for uh, bringing this together because he is a fan of automobiles and uh, time. And he's also, uh, fan of art, you know, Lou and, and Jim. So I really, I, I'm just saying this stuff, not kissing up to people, but it takes others uh, who are interested in uh, similar things, uh, you know, that, that you're interested in, or that have a love for art, you know. Uh, so uh, that's, that's how these, yeah. The reason I got off on that, you see the appropriate steel here. <laughs> I remember this stuff when I, I worked, you know, in a, a factory. This type of material was used for, you know, the radiators of these huge machines. And that's where I, I was really attracted to things like that. But this whole piece has a variety of different types of steel, uh, uh, some cast. There are cast iron pieces too, you know, which I find difficult to weld to steel. Um, but a lot of uh, different types. Oh, uh, I almost lost my uh, train of thought. But the reason I use various types of steel is that when this piece is lit up, uh, you see shadows. Uh, the holes that you see in this, if, it's, if it were lit from underneath, uh, the light would pass through and you can see buildings and you can see people cast. You know, the thing will cast it, create its own shadows with light and that will double everything. Uh, I'm trying to get you people really in, in excited about visiting this piece here at uh, the Riverfront Museum. And uh, it'll happen and things will uh, get back to normal. Okay, I think I'm within my range here. And uh, uh, there's a couple of scenes back there. I can't walk over there, but I can point to it. Um, look at the blue. 1949 sedan net 
Cadillac. Okay? Uh, a lot of you people that are in my age group, you could remember uh, those automobiles. You know, they were like large insects. That's how I pictured them. <laughs> uh, and you could see those people, the mailman, uh, the delivery guy on the buy side. He should watch where he's going because that's a hill that he's looking at me. <laughs> that's, that's another part of this. I have supplied a little narrations, a little bit of voices to everything, but I won't do that today because I get a little carried away with it and, uh, and that's, that's rather strange. But anyway, <laughs> look at this guy. He's kind of walking away. Uh, he's a musician. Lots of musicians and entertainers. That's how that's one of the video targets. I don't know, escape areas in the lives of the people in this piece. Entertainment. I'm speaking about entertainment, you know. When I was a kid, most of the kids played instruments, you know. Uh, most of them desired to be athletes, you know. Anyway, uh, that whole idea was a part of the ingredients that ran through uh, you know, my life as many others. So, uh, there are soldiers, both male and female, marching that explains the contributions that were uh, by African Americans during both great wars and, and the other wars, not to mention, uh, you know, Vietnam and, uh, and Korea, but there were other wars. But definitely, African Americans were out there fighting these wars. And uh, I just found out recently there was a tank battalion at the Battle of the Bulge, you know, World War II in Germany, uh, a tank battalion. And it was, you know, all black drivers and they serviced their tanks. And uh, some of the equipment wasn't really that nice. But anyway, that's another story. But all of those stories are in this installation. Like the Tuskegee Airmen. I have a model of the P-51 Mustang. If you know anything about planes, it's the D model that came along later uh, uh, by... Uh, Oh, I see, I got myself in trouble by Lockheed. I think Lockheed could, uh, could have built the, uh, the P-51 Mustang. I know the P-38 uh, twin fuselage was a great plane, but I try to feature these things. There's a lot of detailed stuff in, in, in this, and you'll recognize, like the Curtis Wright biplane uh, that Betsy Coleman flew. She was from Chicago. and. Um, and there's an example, issues about gender, you know, uh, this piece is filled with all of that stuff, you know. Uh, there's a, a marble-like statue painted <laughs> to uh, resemble marble, uh, but um, Borland, Mr. Borland would drive around in his old truck. And... Um, Anyway, he was a part of Peoria, big part of Peoria, but very unknown. So I did a small statue of him before he died, the way he looked and, and all of that uh, in the home where he was kept. And uh, I did a small statue of him and people standing around it. But that's an example. That's just an example of what this piece, I mean, we're talking about the unsung heroes. We're talking about people that we never heard of. Well, this piece will tell you about them. And, and you'll see it. So, further back, we see this large apple tree, which seems to be the center focus. It's not, because the other areas are very interesting. And we see the bridge here in Peoria, uh, uh, crossing the Illinois, over the Illinois River, you know, that was just refurbished recently with lights and so forth. Uh, Mayor, uh, no, 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 uh, Baker Bridge. Uh, what's the name of it? I can't think of the name of it right now. 
Bob Michael Bridge. Bob Michaels, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Bob Michael Bridge. But anyway, there it is. And um, it, it's, um, I don't know whether you can see it sticking up, and that's how I want you to see it because that's how we see it. You know, it's, we see the tops of it. And maybe we'll tweak it a little bit and add the lights. Okay. There are apartment houses, you know, uh, the old style apartment houses. There's even a plantation back there, building, plantation back, uh, like building, uh, that is now a museum in Jackson, Mississippi, and uh, at Tougaloo College. And that's where I visited and gave a lecture. In fact, the first uh, Bronzeville to Harlem, it traveled there. It was a part of Tougaloo College, and then we uh, we brought it back. But well, that was a really exciting uh, trip. We learned a lot, uh, so much so that I decided to build the building that uh, was a part of our our seminar, our, our, our activities. Oh, okay. you'll have to see this show. You'll have to come see it. Because every piece was well planned. Every little thing, even the dogs and cats uh, that you see, the guy carrying the baseball bats, you know, they are a part of this. My childhood also is involved. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I think that um, I can entertain questions if there are any. Okay, so our first question is from Matthew. And he says, hello, Preston. Thanks for speaking about your piece to us today. How does it feel to live in Peoria and see your exhibit come to life at the Peoria Riverfront Museum? Okay. And I say to you, I say to Matthew, that uh, I'm really delighted and pleased at the fact that uh, the Riverfront Museum is now a part of my life, a part of my sculpture. And you know, wherever you show something like this, you, you always think of it as a contribution to you. But here's a little history, uh, Matt. Uh, I, have, I came to Peoria in 1972 and uh, at the end of 1972. And uh, my wife and I, we established a home and built maybe you know, a place here. Um, I have always been a part of Lakeview. Lakeview during uh, Summer Circus, during the times of um, all of the events and exhibits especially, they always included me in exhibits I've always been, I felt like a member of, the, of a family from the early days, even when John Morris was a kid. <laughs> My daughter, uh, they, they went to college together, but when they were children, you know, I was a part of Lakeview. And so Peoria, uh, being living here in Peoria, in fact, a lot of this display, you'll see Peoria in it. So that's the connection. Carol would like to know, are the figurines modeled on particular people or are they essentially generic representations? Mm -hmm. A little of both, Carol, a little of both. Um, but most, uh, mainly real people, real people like Grandpa Livingston, you know, and, and, and Jackson and Bonds, these are, and Russells. These are the old families that I grew up with. They were part of my, my life. They were like all parents. But every piece, I mean, it can be explained. Uh, Mr. Bonds, the guy who was in the Negro League and was a part of it, carrying the baseball bats. Musicians, you know, Duke Ellington, uh, Jimmy Binkley. Um, this piece is alive.
Judy would like to know, will there be informational plaques throughout the exhibit to help us understand the stories that are being told? Yes, yes, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, yes, um, there, there will be information, you know, like sheets, uh, or, or on display, uh, you know, we, we haven't decided we haven't decided how, just how we'll do it because at each showing we did it in various ways, you know, uh, depending on uh, the availability of space and you know walls and the amount of uh, room. Uh, but um, yes, you'll get to know you'll get to know these people. You'll get to know um, you know the America that unfortunately most of us don't know or we know it only in negative terms and you'll see uh, the pride and beauty of the blend i call it the blend okay diversity is a blend kay would like to know does preston have any future plans to create an actual village slash city of his friends of his friend carlin creation of his friends and Harlem creations. And Harlem? A village slash city of his and friends Harlem creations. Oh, okay, okay. Um, well, I've, I've, I've ex explained that a lot and uh, yes, yes, that's what the piece is uh, about, you know? And uh, yes, yes, the answer to that is yes. Thank you all for joining us today. We hope to see you next time in March when we'll be talking about our upcoming exhibition in the Features Gallery. Have a great day, everyone, and thanks for joining us.